one of the things about plugins with so many good options now, um, you know, it's kind of re like one of the challenges is actually remembering what you have and remembering it when it comes to, let's say it's time to, you know, put in a distortion or a, a reverb or a chorus. It's remembering, oh, okay, that's right. I have that other thing, I should try it. Like most people, I go through phases where I'm just kind of always using the same chorus. I just kind of reach for the same one. Um, but I realized a way around that is just to try and get this stuff organized a little better. And people don't use it that often, but there's something in here called the plugin manager. Um, and you can set up a, you know, your own list of favorites. Um, there's your default category, and then there's a list that you can create. So even though you may have all of these plugins, um, you probably find you only use you know, 20 or 30% of them. Plus there's gonna be a bunch of stuff in here that you're never gonna use, like a filter that is mono and you never filter anything using that mono plugin. Um, so, you know, when you come here to look through your list, you're always scrolling forever looking for the thing and there's four different versions of that thing and you've got to find which one it is. So what I started to do was just in my favorites category, just drag over the things that I use all the time and the correct versions of them. And then from there, I started to categorize them in a way that made sense to me. I mean, obviously Cubase does that for you as well, but it doesn't always get everything. Not every plugin, um, you know, will be properly named or properly categorized. Um, but here you can do it in a certain way. So if I'm looking for a reverb, I have all my reverbs kind of sitting here, everything that I've ever used. And this comes in very handy. You just come in here and you're like, okay, what reverb? And then I guess it sort of makes you think about, hmm, here's all of the reverbs that I've previously used or I think are usable out of my entire collection. And you can go in and uh, choose them. What I've also started doing now is the things that are really, really high use, I just keep them at the top here. Um, I also keep some things here, um, you know, like this thing I just bought, I still don't really know what to do with it but I keep it up the top so I remember to try it on something, so I learn it. And I think that's a, you know, a big part of it is just, you know, each time you come, I, I've always taken this approach that with every song I try to use a couple of new plugins. Um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously I'm still going for the best possible outcome with that song, but if, you know, I'm coming to a song and I need a reverb, I'm looking for one here, you know, what's one that I haven't really used much? Um, oh, okay, I haven't used this one. Um, let's try and make it work. And it's just kind of, you know, trying to make, just trying to get a little bit of recording school into every project, if you like, um, in that you want to eventually learn what all of your plugins do. And I, th I think that's kind of the new paradigm that we're in. Uh, you know, with, uh, the, I guess, the, the engineers of old, they knew their outboard gear so well. And, you know, to a large degree, that is what engineering is these days. It's knowing what tool to use on what, uh, what you know, you know what, what application, and also knowing what will suit. And the only way you do that is by trying to use, you know, com on every project, just trying to use these plugins back to back. And you'll try that, pl that reverb, and then you'll try this one, you'll be like, okay, that one does more of this thing. This one's a little brighter, it's probably better for this application. And over time, you'll start to, you know, have a little bit of a shorthand. I mean, in the sense that it took me a while to learn what type of compressors to use. Um, you know, these days, I kind of know the sound of most of these compressors. Um, and you just start to get a hint for, okay, um, this sound is a little too bright, I want to compress it, I know this type of thing will kind of tame it and warm it up and it has this kind of attack. And I find that you can maybe read those things or you can have sort of a theoretical understanding of it, but you just kind of have to hear it and relate to it in your own way. You've got to, uh, you, you know, you'll kind of relate to it in, in a 
in in a way that makes sense to you.